everyone. This is Ayman Tarabishi, the President and CEO of the International Council for Small Business. I'm also Deputy Chair of the Department of Management at GW School of Business. I am just excited and delighted with the, today's ICSB Exchange webinar for a couple of reasons. Well, there's many reasons here, so let me just go through them here. First of all, the topic itself, U Inc is very, very important. And, and, I, and I, been, I commissioned this topic and, and I'm just delighted I'll introduce you in a, in a minute here because I thought as the world is changing and everything is changing here, I wanted us to, to spend some time on, on recrafting, rethinking, redeveloping, re-energizing us for a new world. So the topic itself, you Inc, is about you being incorporated into this new world and what will it take? Saying this, I am, I am beyond excited that I have, I have asked um, Dr. Ruth Dwyer to, to take the lead on this and to put this together. She did such a fantastic job at the Youth Academy that um, I, 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 I emailed her, I called her, I WhatsApped her, and I didn't ask her, I just told her. <laughs> She's gonna do it again, right? So she is so gracious and so kind to, to accept my request. And, and she spent a lot of time and effort in doing this and we're recording it here. So you're gonna, gonna be such a value added. She is just formidable. She's so kind. She's a fantastic human being. She's a, she's a student at George Washington University, an MBA student at George Washington University, an absolute delight. And you are gonna just be in for a treat on this. And number three, which is really important here, as we kick off the series here, this is gonna build into something much more. Um, the, ima the imagination and the vision we have this is we roll out this to as many as many people as possible. We're looking at many different people from around the world, all different ages to come here to look at this. This topic has no age limitation to it. It's about you. You at any stage of your life is critical here. And we're gearing up for this for our, our Paris World Congress here. So as you see this playing out, you'll see this playing out more and more in our World Congress in Paris next year. So you see the connections here. With that, I want to introduce uh, Dr. Ruth. Thank you so much for coming today. It's Friday. I call it Happy Friday because it's going to be a fantastic session. So thank you so much, Ruth. Thank you. I'm very honored to be here. Um, so as Dr. Tarabishi said, there we go. As Dr. Tarabishi said, um, I'm really excited to be here. I'm excited that we're doing this in conjunction, to do this in conjunction with the ICBS, the SMEs. And I'd also like to put out a special thank you for any of you that are from the UAEU, since it sounds like a collaboration with them is what originally started this idea going. Um, so as Dr. Tarabishi said, this is a time where the world needs to retool. How do we retool? Um, I had a serious illness a couple years ago so I'm actually a year or two ahead of a lot of people with retooling. And these series include some of my thoughts and some of the tools that I've found useful as I've worked on trying to do retooling. Um, before we get going, I'd like to do a quick tech, quick tech check and just see how things are working. So first question for the tech check. And I did see somebody, I don't remember who it was a minute ago that raised their thumb, put their hand up. I'm gonna tell you thank you because that's actually my first tech check. That's one of the ways for me to know what you guys are thinking and how many of you are kind of included. And my first tech check is, have you ever bought something or paid a little bit more for something just because you liked the brand or person that you are buying from? If the answer is yes, just go ahead and raise your hand because I'd like to see. Very nice, awesome, very good. All right. And then the next question is for if you haven't done that, but, you just want to raise your hand, please just raise your hand for me. So you want to see yourself. Very good. Thank you. All right. The other thing that I'd like to check on is looking at the comments, um, the conversation phase. And I'm actually not able to, to sign in on that right, right now. So Dr. Terabishi is going to help me with this. And the first question I had with that was, what do you think is your most valuable asset? And if you don't have a very, very valuable asset that you can think so, of, so here comes then one. Have a smiley face. So it's one um, it's intu intuition, enthusiasm. Oh, very good. Those are great. Very good. Kindness. I like that one. Kindness. I like that too. Desiree. It's really important. Oh, I know Desiree. Yep. Very good. All right. So thank you. 
now. Oh, last question I forgot to ask. Where's everybody from? Can you put in the comment section? Where, and actually, I'm going to try something a little different. Instead of putting it in the comment section, try putting it in the question and answer section so I can see if I can see that. Uh, no, nope, not seeing that either. So, all right, where's everybody from? People said New York, Washington, D.C., um, Houston, Beijing. Oh, wow. Okay. UAE. Actually, I just got a box that popped up with the question and answer things. UAE. So that we can use that as a way for me to know what people are mm -hmm. saying. Awesome. We're all over. Thank you. All right. Tech checks over. So, one second here. There we go. Okay. This is where I admit that I'm learning too, because when it comes to most valuable asset, I'm still trying to make up my mind. But two of the ones that are really important for today's conversation are your reputation and time. Um, they both are part of the UINC. And as I said, we're going to be talking a lot about restructuring. So what is UINC? It's simply the realization that you are your best asset and that your time is valuable. How can you use the gifts and time that you have to make a living doing something you love? So what are we going to talk about? Today we're going to talk about you. As Dr. Terabishi said, we're uh, doing this as a several part seminar. Next one's going to be on the ink, but today is ink, you. We're going to focus on, um, oh, I'm sorry, next one's about ink. The third session that we've planned is putting you ink together. And the last one is talking about you as a star. So the first business concept, because we're going to use business concepts, some science, some kind of little um, questionnaires to help you kind of sort through some questions. And the first business concept we're going to talk, explore is that of satisficing. Now, I will tell you, a year ago, I had not heard of this term. I've been in business school now for about a year. And the concept, although the term isn't always used, the concept comes up over and over again. Satisficing is the idea promoted by Nobel Prize winner Herbert A. Simon, uh, who won the Nobel Prize in economics in 1978. This is the word that describes the concept of settling for acceptable instead of working for the best. Satisficing is great when you need to decide what you have for dinner or what kind of soap to buy, but is it the best way to spend the majority of your time as you try to support yourself and your family? Or can you find something more satisfying? It should be noted that your best option is not usually just sitting out there waiting in the open. Why else would satisfying ever be a concept? Usually there's some form of barrier. Given our barriers in life, how do you know what will be satisfying? Satisfying, not just satisfying today, but also in the future. And how do you sort out when you use satisficing and when you go to be satisfied? So the first question I'm going to ask you guys, or the next question I'm going to ask you guys is, can you give me some examples of satisficing? And we'll just, I'll take a look at them in the question and answer, and we'll, then we'll keep moving. If you guys can think of an example of some time when you satisfice. So... I don't see them coming through on the questionnaires. Dr. Tarabishi, can you listen? Yeah, no, it's a tough one here. I think you went a little bit too fast. Try it again slowly because people are still processing it. It's, it's a new term for me. I'm kind of scratching my head a little bit. Too. Oh, yeah. It's one that I've heard a couple of times, but it's not a very common term. But satisficing is the idea that you pick something because it's convenient and it'll be good enough. Whereas satisfying is what's really best. So what are some things that you think of? I gave examples of dinner, you know, what you eat for dinner or what you're wearing. Usually we pick those as satis, we usually satisfice with those. I go to the closet and I go, mm -hmm. oh, this dress will work for today. There are other times, maybe a first date, a wedding, a special occasion where you pick that has to be the, it has to be your best possible option. So. Yeah, so here's one that's a nice one here. Waking up early, okay? Very good. Um, that's a nice one here, Miriam. That's a good one here. Yeah. Um, because I, I can add to that here is, you know, I like to exercise in the morning, okay? Uh -huh. But to, so to wake up, to exercise in the morning, you have to wake up early, Yeah. okay? 
And so for me, it's saying, well, you know, I can sleep in, but really in, in reality, <laughs> right, if, if I'm going to satisfy my well-being, I better wake up early and go for a jog and just to get my <laughs> blood going and my energy. So Mir Miriam, that's a good one here. Khulud says sick leave, right? Sick leave is actually a strategic move, Khulud. I agree with you because sometimes sick leave is good for your own, and you're not sick, it's just for your own well-being. So yeah. that's good. Go. Good. Very good. All right. So, so those are both great examples of satisfying and satisficing. So what are some of your barriers? Can people give an example of what one of their barriers is? One of the barriers here is motivation. You yeah, know, it's, it's a it's huge a, barrier. Right, and, and, and the energy behind it, so. Very good. Very good. And I see, I, since I've been able to pop some of the comments up, I see somebody says working at a job that's easier to get into, but not the thing you want to do. That's a perfect example of satisfying. Yeah, and, and also somebody, Miriam also jumped in and said our goals sometimes are barriers because, you, you know, you, you, you underestimate or you under, underscore the goals you really want to achieve. Good one, Miriam. Yeah. Very good. And um, Yvonne mentioned that it's satisfying is something that you want to do. Hold on a second, I've only got half the comment in the box. Give me a minute here to get the rest of the comment box over. Made that makes you comfortable and content. Yeah, satisfying is sometimes just something that just makes you comfortable and content. Um, but a lot of times it's also picking your best choices or picking the second best choice. So, so given in our, for our life that there are things that it's worth just accepting what's available and there are other things that are worth going for what's best, um, how do you decide when you are satisfied? Well, like any other journey, it helps to have a starting place. How do you look for a satisfying job? If you know your starting place and you know your target, your journey may not be straight, but you'll probably get there. If you don't have any idea where you're starting and you don't have any idea what your target is, it's probably not going to work real well for you. It's probably just going to be a mess. So how do you think of your goals? How do you pick your targets? How do you think of your goals? If you're like me, you probably have too many goals to be able to pick. But goals also meet basic needs. And it's important to have more than one goal sometimes. Sometimes you need to have it meet the basic need of survival or safety or social interaction. Sometimes you need to have a certain social status or a certain level of self-awareness. Um, but they also, if you notice, if you've ever been kind to someone that you didn't know, it actually is a huge rush. There's something built in most people that gives them the need to contribute to the society, contribute to others around them, and also to have an impact. So if you don't know, how do you pick? There's a lot of good goals. I like doing the goal, I like looking at it in terms of think about someone you know who is truly happy, joyful, or at peace with themselves, both at home and at work. Uh, the person I think about is also a little bit silly. Sometimes it can be because people are kind, sometimes it can be for a lot of reasons, but think about what kind of impact this person has made on you. Have they made a contribution or an impact? I'm going to guess if it's someone who's important to you that they are making contributions and impacts to people. So when you think about a person, can you list some of the things like contributions and impacts, or do you think they're primarily mostly just meeting their basic security needs? So when you decide to pick it, you just pick anywhere that you can contribute and make an impact, just anywhere, or do you need to find the right target for you? Think about the people you know who've been truly fulfilled. Are, and I'm gonna ask you to type this one in the question and answer box. Are they just satisfying themselves? Do they have one primary goal or target? Do they have a lot of targets? Or do they kind of have a set of targets that make sense? So. So when you think about the person, all seven, awesome, Phoebe, very good, that they're meeting all of the seven. Very good. How about the number of targets that people are meeting? Do they tend to have things that kind of look like they're a unified goal 
even if they meet all seven of them, do they all kind of fit together? Okay. So we're going to move on. Um, oh, very good. Well, that actually must be the right tar the target for me. And then it will work serving others. That's a great comment, Richard. Thank you. Adjust my screens accidentally trying to get the comments in there so I can see them. Okay. So actually trying to figure out your what is meaningful to you is not that easy because brains are complicated. So have you ever had a hard time putting on something that's emotionally hard, important into words? This is very common because the part of our brains that handle emotion are localizing a relatively small part of our brain. And it's not the part of our brains that we use for logic or for speech. So this is actually really key understanding. The, so I'm going to repeat it again. The part of our brains that handle emotions are localized in a small part of our brain, really deep inside. A lot of people call it our primitive brain or our primate brain. Um, Midbrain would be the anatomical location, but it's not the part we use for our logic or our speech. So this has some implications. Are there companies that you are always loyal to better than their competition every single time? My example for that is a really silly one. I'm alert, I am always loyal to Coca-Cola over Pepsi. And I don't even drink soda that often. And I certainly, I don't like cola. Why would I be loyal to Coke? Well, it has to do with the fact that I had a family member who used to work for them. So sometimes our loyal reasons have nothing to do with anything that makes sense in our, in our thinking parts of our brain. Other things that don't make sense logically is, are there people that you know that logically are perfectly nice people, but somehow you just don't yeah. care for them? Ruth, we lost the presentation. And... Oh, we lost the presentation. Oh, well, that would not be good. Let me try seeing what I can do here. Uh, we just see your Zoom screen, so maybe you want to go back. To to me. Uh, I do want to go back to that. Thank you. So Thank on you the tab there, just on. click on U Inc. If you click on their tab up there on your browser, on my browser. Okay. You see, you see your browser, you see which slide. Go to your presentation on U Inc. Ah, there we go. Thank you. It got lost behind the. Um, yeah, yeah. Now they're back. Okay. There you're back. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> so, all right. So I'm going to go back and show you these script, this, uh, this one again. Hold on a second here. Because this is one that's important. Um, this is the part of your brain that handles emotion is middle, uh, it's a relatively small part of your brain, um, but it's not the part of our brain that we use for logic or speech. And as I was saying, sometimes we can be loyal to companies that we don't even use their products. Sometimes we have first impressions of people that aren't correct. And um, sometimes you have problems putting things into words, you know, especially when it's something that's really important to you or someone you love. Can you think, and I'm gonna ask you to skip on sharing this one because that way we can stay kind of more close to on time. Um, Simon Sinek has the idea that there is something called a golden circle. And in it, you have a why, how, and what. He uses it to talk about communication. So why is your purpose? Kind of like, what are you doing things for? Why do people do things? Um, actions, that, how is how you bring your uh, actions into life? How are you different from others? In business, you would call that your product um, differentiation. And then what we actually do every day. And his theory is that, and I don't buy everything in his theory, but I like the fact that his theory buys into, hold on a second, I'm gonna skip this slide, buys into your neurobiology, that your frontal brain does the how and the what, what that's the part that does your logic. And it often, and it also does your speech, but it also, it, it is often a, a response to what you've already figured out deep in your midbrain. So, so if your midbrain has problems with language, how do you figure out what your purpose is? Simon Sinek has his kind of method that he talks about, and I'll, I'll throw that in at the end. Um, 
The reality is I found lots of ways of figuring out what your purpose is. I'm going to just go through briefly one of them here because everybody is different and I like this particular one, but it may not be the one that fits you. I'll mention a couple of them at the end of the speech. So this one, I'm gonna focus on a method developed by Jack Canfield. He's also the author of the Chicken Soup books. And in it, there are three questions. And I want you just to think about questions. I'm gonna turn on a little timer here for you while I do the three questions. If the volume's too loud, please turn your volume down. Hopefully that everything will work with this tech. But the three questions are, what are two qualities that I most enjoy expressing in life? What are two ways I most love and enjoy expressing these qualities when interacting with others? And what would the world look like if it were perfect according to me? Now, before we do this, I want you to kind of pay attention to yourself real well. So I'm gonna have you take a couple deep breaths. And while you think about the answers to these questions, notice your energy and emotions. What resonates? And I'm gonna just turn the timer on here for a minute. Hold on a second, that sent me backwards. Too many screens. There we go. Just think about what are the things that resonate with you? Are there two qualities that you most enjoy expressing or two things that you most love, enjoy the two ways that you most love to like to express them? And what would the world look like if it were perfect according to you? How do things all fit? Now, this is actually a lifelong journey. So I'm just gonna plant that idea in your head and keep moving. So, don't worry if you don't know what your target is after looking at these three questions. I wasn't expecting you to have any idea what it is, but I do want you to at least think about kind of generally what wall are you aiming at? Figuring out your overall purpose will help you if you want to start trying to figure out what will really, really satisfy you. But like many things, you can start in the direction and sometimes it's good enough to, this is one of those things that's good enough to satisfy with. Satisfy by starting in the right direction and having some idea. So something that's more concrete, more easy to understand is actually talking about personal branding because personal branding is your best true self that you know right now that you're sharing with the world. So I'm gonna throw in a little bit of history along with the business and science that we've already discussed. The word brand is described from the word brandier, a word from ancient Norse meaning to burn. By the 1300s, it was already being used to describe pieces of wood that were burning that were used as tools. If any of you are fans of Western movies, then you probably already know that in the Wild West days of the US, cows were allowed to roam free over large grasslands to feed and people would brand them in order to know what cows belong to their herd. This is the picture that comes to my mind, but it's not exactly look doesn't exactly look like fun to me. I sat there and when I first heard the term, I'm like, I don't want to be branded. But branding does help our brains deal with the world. As I already said, our brains aren't very logical. And, or only part of our brain is logical. And the reality is, is that we are already branded by what we wear, who we hang out with, and the things we post to the internet. Hopefully by the end of our time here, you will have a more solid understanding of why personal, why personal branding works what your brand says about you, and how to decide which you want your brand to be. As I mentioned before, it's a way of helping our brains take shortcuts. If you don't know what something is, or there's too many choices, our brains get confused. On the other hand, if we're able to quickly identify something, then our brains are happy. Let's see how good you all are at identifying things. This is the first question I have, first, first picture. What brands do you recognize? I'm gonna give you a 20 second timer. Ready, set, go. And just type them into the question and A so that I can see them.
Awesome. So did anybody recognize any of those brands on the, on the screen? Okay. Yeah. I don't recognize any of them either. So let's try again. I'm going to show you another picture. I'm going to give you guys another 20 seconds to see if you recognize any of these. Type them in as you recognize, if you do. And even if someone's already punched one in, you can go ahead and type that in too. Type it in again. Awesome. So as I kind of expected, as suspected, you all were able to recognize these very fast. Now, if you look at this picture, it's actually a lot fuzzier than the last picture, but it's, it's branding, it's proof of branding, that when you have things that you have a recognizable label that you've seen the label before, you have an easier time recognizing it. It helps our brain jump. So how are people different than brands? So at this point, I'm gonna rise some show some pictures and I want you to notice we're going to go back to seeing that resonate thing. I want you to notice inside yourself not only do you recognize the face but do you, do you feel a certain emotion or a certain thought or do you attribute certain things to each of these people and and there is kind of a theme out of who I picked but you can also recognize that but we're going to go with faces when you know these people put the face uh, when you recognize these people just write them down in the Q&A. So do you guys recognize any of these people? Yeah, most people recognize them. Okay, good, thank you. All right, so I'm gonna try somebody who might not be as easy to recognize. Dr. Terabishi, let me know if people recognize, who, who people think this is as I go through the slides, so just shout it out. No. Do you recognize this person? It's the same person. Did I pick somebody who is recognizable for most of you now? Yeah, Samuel Jackson. Very good. At what point did people recognize him? Did they recognize him earlier? Or did they recognize him when he got to his characters? When did you guys recognize Phoebe, when did you recognize him? Before or after, based on his characters? after yeah so that it's um oh, now I'm, I'm just i'm on a delay for getting answers back on the q a that's part of the issues here okay so thank you guys you guys are awesome okay so characters can have their own kind of personal brand as well and we kind of if you think about it you associate some things with mace windu and some things with nick fury but in reality this is the brand that it appears that Samuel L. Jackson is trying to promote about himself. Um, and if you look at those pictures, you probably can make guesses about things that he eats, things he likes, music that he listens to. But like everything else, not everything, you don't always say what you want to. For instance, when I look at these pictures, I think jazz. And apparently a lot of other people do too, because He's been quoted to say, what kills me is that everybody thinks I like jazz. And if you look at random images of jazz that I picked from the internet, you can see why people might associate that as his favorite version of music. I have no idea if that's really his favorite version of music or not. So how do you decide on your image for yourself? It's easy if you take someone else's, but like everything else, it has an opportunity cost. That's our next business word we're gonna throw out here describes what you're missing if you don't do something. This is true in life as well as in business. If you use someone else's image, what will you miss out on? Will you miss out on a dream? Are you missing out on an opportunity because you're not being your true authentic self? So who are you? Sometimes when you're trying to figure out who you are or what you wanna say about yourself, it's easier to start with figuring out who you are not. So if you have a piece of paper, 
I'm going to ask you to get out your piece of paper now and I'm going to ask you to divide it into four pieces. And I'm going to have four quarters and in, I'm sorry, just on the back, we're doing the four quarters in a few minutes. I jumped ahead of myself. So just on the piece of paper, I'd like you to write down things that you either don't like about yourself or that don't fit you anymore. And it wouldn't be quite fair of me to ask this for you guys if I didn't give you an example. This is a picture of a Christmas card that my parents sent out the year I was born. For those of you who um, are not from a culture where they do Christmas cards, at the time I was born, they were basically social media. Okay, so only once a year, social media for the people my family knew. But it doesn't really fit me anymore. I love this picture. It has my older brother and my sister in it. But it, and it does say something about me, but it's not exactly who I am. For example, I feed myself now, and I probably would break a crib if I tried to fit into it. It also doesn't include my older si or my younger sister, who's also important to me. So I'm gonna have you get out your piece of paper, think about where social media says something about you that you don't like, or that isn't quite true anymore. And I'm actually gonna give you a whole 40 seconds to answer this one because I think this is a little bit of a harder question. I missed my timer thing. So you guys actually get a few a few seconds longer than 40 seconds. All right. Hold on a second here. Okay, now I want you to think about it. And I was gonna ask people to raise their hands, but given my technical issues, um, I just want you to think, uh, if, make, think about, is there anything there that you don't wanna be discovered by your great grandchildren that you already know is not a great description for yourself. All right, so how do you decide on an image? Who are you? Get out your piece of paper and pencil again. This time, now it's finally time to divide it into four quarters. And for your first quarter, I'm gonna give you 30 seconds to write down as many words as you can possibly think of to think about yourself. Prefer words that you like about yourself, but any word that's true. And just the goal is to put as many as possible on this quarter piece of paper. Now we're gonna move on. For the next quarter of your piece of paper, I'm gonna give you 30 seconds to write down as many people or things that you like or admire. For example, um, are there particular people you admire? Some of the people whose pictures you shot are some of the people I admire. But are there also things like books, music, cars? So, hold on a second, I got out of the wrong, hit the wrong thing. Looks like I'm going to have to time you myself. And that's because my timer went missing on 
on this one. Oh, there it is. Now it just popped up. Okay. All right, now for your third quarter, this one's harder, so you're gonna get a whole minute for this one. Write down as many words as you can think of to describe the things and the people that you put in on the last quarter. So you're gonna be using adjectives. So if I'm gonna use cars as an example, do you like them because they're fast, because they're useful, or because they represent freedom and choices? Or do you like them for all the reasons above, as above? Just write down as many adjectives as you can think of. Now, for your last quarter of the page, we are actually gonna do it as a speed round. We're only gonna give you 15 seconds. And this is because I really do want you to use your instincts and I want you to just go with it with what your instincts tell you right now. And I want you to list or circle the three to five words. So you're going back to the last quarter, the third quarter that we worked on, that the three to five words that best describe what you want other people to know about you. So, here we go, set, go. All right, time's up. Remember, these were things that were just supposed to be quick instinct. Um, this is the target you're going to aim for. This is actually the words that you want to keep in mind when you think about your personal brand. And you also then want to use those to define what you have on the internet about yourself. You want to use them to define what you put into posts. I will tell you, there are times I start writing a post and I go, yeah, that doesn't quite fit with who I want to be and who I really truly am and who I want other people to see me truly as. And I still sometimes forget and still sometimes just write things immediately. Also, don't forget to think about what shows up on your friends' sites. Now, um, I'm going to have you think of the paper. We're going to explain the paper for a little bit here. So imagine that the quarters are windows into seeing who you are and what you want people to see. The first quarter is how you see yourself. Those were the words that you described yourself very quickly with. The second quarter probably is a pretty good list of things that other people can probably see about you. You know, do you have for people beliefs, faiths, um, movements that you believe in? What kind of things do you like to do? What kind of clothes do you like to wear? Do you play any sports? What do you do with your free time? The third window tells a little bit about the personal personality traits and characteristics that you appreciate, even if you don't think you have them now. Think of them as your personal trait wish list. And the fourth quarter is basically your megaphone. What do you want people to see about you? How do you let people know who you are? And of course, the internet is the biggest megaphone out there at the moment. 
Now flip it back over to that first slide we talked about, those things that you don't necessarily want your great, great, great grandchildren to see or know about you. That is actually the pollution that gets in the way of seeing your brand. So back to purpose. Additional ways in which people can try to find, help your brain find words. So, The first one is get a friend. Ask a friend to help you tell your stories. Think about doing a picture board. And also think about meditation. So we're gonna talk about these just a tiny bit each. So meditation helps people kind of get in touch with how their bodies respond and where their thought flows go. I have a website for you if you have um, interest in learning more about it. Picture boards work really well for people who are visually oriented. Um, so what you do is you take a bunch of magazines, you sit down just with any magazines, anything you don't mind destroying that you already own, and you start cutting any pictures out that touch you or any words that mean anything to you. And then you put them together on a picture board and see where the themes are with that. The friend is a little bit more difficult. With that one, you want to get a friend who can help you hear your stories. You tell them some of your key stories, even if they're stories they've already heard. Whenever you're doing any of these, you want to make sure to pay attention to, or ask your friends to pay attention to, energy increases, body changes. If they, for instance, if you get a lump in your throat or your stomach or your heart rate, you want to go back to thinking about what, is, what are the harmonics, what vibrates, what resonates within you. Um, as I said, meditation is actually a really great way for you to start getting kind of in touch with what resonates with you. If you're curious about meditation, Here's a little video by Martin Borenson, uh, and he is a Yale MBA, um, who talks about doing what he calls a one moment meditation. I, I have to admit, I always laugh because this video is about five and a half minutes. So he spends more than five minutes teaching you how to do a one moment meditation. But it's actually a great description of other meditation as well. So if it's a subject you're interested in, I would encourage you to take a look at this video. So, as you go about it, I want you to think about what makes you special. What is your purpose? Why? How does branding make it easier for us to communicate who we are and what we want? So are you a Pepsi person? Are you a Coke person? Why? Does it make it easier to communicate things about you? So I hope the window exercise helped you show your best authentic true self. As, it, as we say, it all starts with you. If you don't know who you are, it's hard for you to have anybody else know who you are and for you to share your vision with other people. And I hope you also uh, have learned a little bit about how personal branding can help you achieve what you want. As we've said, this is going to be a several week or a several session series. In the next session, we're going to explore you ink with an emphasis on ink. How can you use your gifts to meet the world's needs? In other words, how can you make a living doing something you love? As you go through your life, the choices are gonna be different, but what direction should you take now? This next session goes through some similar types of exercises to help you define your path, figure out the puzzle pieces that are part of your path, so that you can then make a business plan for life as you decide your next move. Again, I'd like to say thank you to uh, Dr. Tara Bishi and Sky Banks and ICSB for helping put this on. I'd also like to put out a special thank you to Selma Baba, who is a friend of mine from um, school who helped me, uh, who gave me insights and helped kind of edit the presentation. Thank you, Ruth. This is really nice. And this is a nice, I like, I like your graphics here. This is important. Let me ask you some questions here, but I want to also open it up for everybody here uh, for any questions or, 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 or comments they have here. We kicked off this series about you, Inc., you as the person, as a human being. And I like the way you, you focus on the human aspect first and how to build your brand. Explain a little bit as you put the slides together and you are kind of thinking it through here, what's the connection between you, your humanity, and the brand? if you can explain in your own words, because it might, might just connect with everybody. So are you asking it for me personally? 
or yeah. or okay oh both you personally and also kind of what you want people to share get out of this as well to learn from this so i i envision a world in which people can fully develop every every child every adult every person in this world has a chance to fully develop who they are um part of this is helping people, these exercises, and I actually developed the window exercise. Um, it's based on things I used to do with my pediatric patients when they were teenage, my teenagers were kind of trying to think their way through things as they were growing up. And um, I, I, I think that if you are going to try to tell people who you are, you need to work on making sure you know who you are, or at least who you are for right now. I'm gonna go back to the image of the target within the wall covering over the target may not know exactly where the center of the target is, but you should at least know how to aim for that wall. There's the expression of hitting a barn door or hitting the side of the barn. You should be able to know where the barn you're aiming for is. Um, and so that for me, this, uh, the idea of branding is a great mechanism and the window exercise is a great way for you to start kind of getting in touch with what do you want people to know. And it also helps you because if you get in touch with who you are, and you start letting people know who you are, it's then easier for you to find collaborations. So is your collaboration going to be finding a job that fits you? Um, we all know people who work in jobs that are not glamorous jobs. I actually have a friend who has a PhD who does house cleaning and he's very happy because he's gotten in touch with what's really important to him. And he likes making things clean. He likes making the world more orderly and he likes helping people. And that's one of the ways that he has found to target who he is. And if you know who you are, you can start finding collaborations either within jobs where you work for other people or within when you do your own enterprise, if you do starting a small business for yourself. Um, and that's going to be some of what we talk about next time too, is how do you direct who you are? Again, we're going to do some more kind of little exercises on develop, developing an understanding of ourselves. But how do you take who you are and use it to then make an income? So, I don't know. Did I answer your question? Absolutely did. Um, let's see if there's any other questions coming here. Um, from everyone. Let me open up the Q&A section here. One second here. Um, here's a, um, okay, so here's a, here's a comment and a, and, and, a, and a question here. Part of my brand at the UN is my shopping bag that I use to carry documents and material which is nice. I, I like that. I find I love it each that. Day, right? So I find that each day, so a former head of state sometimes does not remember my name, but says he is the guy with the shopping bag. There's no other person on earth he is referring to but me. It is. And, 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 and that's you creating a brand for yourself. So that's good. So let me, let me ask everybody here in the chat or the question here. If, and I'm going to use uh, Thomas's um, question here. If, if there's one thing about your brand, what might that be, All right? So let's, let's start. Miriam, Khaloud, write me one visual thing that you say, you know, Dr. Tarbishi, you're gonna, this is, if you see this about me, you know, that this is just, people will be like, oh, it's, 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 it's Rana or Khaloud or Miriam or, or Tori or Sarah. What, what can that be? What is that visual representation that you have? And I'm or gonna can answer Rana's be... question Go while ahead. they're doing that. Yeah. Um, well, you finish your sentence first. I'm sorry. Well, okay. So it can be anything from style to fashion to what you wear to how you talk, how you come into the room. What is it that people know as soon as as soon as they see you or know you to be like, oh yeah, we know who you're talking about. What might that be? And I'm going to answer Rana's question while people start typing them in. Um, so in a busy world, everybody's an expert at something. How do you create a niche? The reality is, is that there may be only one best world runner. There may only be one best person at, um, you know, who knows the ins and outs of astrophysics. There may only be one Bill Gates. But the reality is, is that if you take all the talents you have, so you think about your four or five things that are your most important talents, and you start combining those and you look at who has talents in this and this and this and this, all of a sudden you start, you start being the expert in your combination of talents. And that's a good way to think about how to create your niche. 
There's a couple of ones here. Miriam says, putting my own touch on a thing from love to new ideas in business world. That's great. But let me, let me give you, let me be more explicit here. And I'll give you a personal example here. When I was young, when I was, um, let's say, 27, 28 years old, I ended up working at the World Bank. Okay, so I had a very nice job working at the World Bank. And I would, I would, wait, I would go in the morning to the World Bank and I'll go into my division, which is a big kind of whole floor here. And I made it a point that I go around in the morning at 8, 8.30 in the morning, I walk around and I say good morning to everybody. Every morning I'd walk and say good morning to everybody. Everybody, anybody in their office, anybody just coming in, I'd be like, good morning, good morning, and I would walk. They didn't know my name. Some of you, some people didn't even know my name forever, but they knew that every morning I would go in and say good morning to everybody. Even the vice president, I'll be see him in the office and he's talking, I'll wave and say good morning to him. And I'll just continue walking. Why? Because I'm a morning person. I'm a happy person. I like the mornings. I'm always happy in the morning. Okay. And the next thing you know, people will be like, this, this kid, what's his name? He always comes and says good morning. Okay. And, and, and the next thing you know, they didn't know me. They didn't even know my no name. It's just that this is the good morning kid. He always comes around and says good morning to us. Okay. And, and that was my brand. I was the person that was always cheerful in the morning, always saying good morning to everybody here. What has this translated? Translated into many such positive things. You know, we would have people come in and say, hey, how are you? Good morning. How are you doing? Right. And then I became very popular because I was just a happy person in the morning. That's my question. What is it about you all that you can say somebody remembers me because of this? Something that I do, something that I say, something that I act on that people will say, oh, we know who this person is. This is the good morning thing. Or as Thomas said, he's the person that carries a bag with him, a shopping bag with him. Okay. What is it that makes you that, okay, so Tori goes, you're an expert note taker. That's it. That's exactly it. You are known for this thing. Okay. So another thing, let me give you another example. Again, I, I bring you stuff because of the age group here. Um, right. Uh, he, so he did the same thing. Let me give you another example here. Um, at my desk, when I used to have a small desk cubicle at the World Bank, um, I used to, uh, I, I had these little houses, they're small ceramic houses. Uh, KLM used to give them. Um, if you're flying with KLM, they will give you a little house, a ceramic house. And uh, so my parents will have them. And these little houses, right, I'll put on my desk. I had like five of them, small little houses. Does that make sense for everybody? Like, like you know, you can put anything you want. You can put little cats, little statues, whatever you want. But I had these little houses on my desk. Why? Because I, they looked neat. They looked nice. So the next thing, you know, one day, the next thing, you know, the vice president comes and looks and says, you collect these houses? And I'm like, well, kind of, I have a lot of them. He goes, come with me. Right. So I go with him and then he, he, I go into his office. Now he's a vice president. I go into his office and he has two boxes of these houses. Why? Because he flew a lot. So he collected all these houses. They gave it to him. He goes, I have no idea what to do with them, but they give them to me all the time. So I was like, well, you collect them, you create a whole collection. And he goes, you do? I'm like, yes, you do. He goes, explain. So I quickly ran and got him a little map. I said, here's the map of all the houses. Here's what each house means. Here's how you collect them. And I, and I said to him, I said, let me start your collection, but I'll take the ones I need. <laughs> now, ima now, now imagine this, Khulud. Imagine this. He is a vice president. He is a vice president. I am basically have my collection of houses. I started his collection and I'm sitting in my cubicle in afternoon and his secretary runs to me and says, Ayman, come quickly. The vice president wants you on the phone immediately. So I run to her office. He says, answer. And the vice president goes, Ayman, which house do we get? House number 17 or 19? I'm on the plane. Let me know. <laughs> do you follow? <laughs> do you yeah. understand everybody? I am now negotiating with the vice president of which house he should collect in his collection. That's a personal brand. You do something for passion. You do something because you're having fun, but you do something to connect with people. Is that, does that make sense for everybody? What I mean here? So for Miriam, for all of you here, for Sarah, what is it that you do that connects you with other human beings, 
right? And that's really fundamentally what we were trying to explain here. Okay. Any other questions or comments here? I know Richard is jumping on this because his dad used to do it, right? And um, how do you connect? There's, let me ask Ruth. How do you connect, Ruth? So for me, um, I, I also was one of those people who always walked in the office, smiled, and said hi to everybody because that is one of those times where you work on trying to connect with people. It's a little harder online. Um, so for ways of connecting with people, I really, I, I like LinkedIn. LinkedIn for me has been a great um, mechanism for getting to know other people and at least learning a little bit about them and um, learning more about the world. Um, I love doing this. This was really fun. I liked doing it last summer as part of the big two week event as well. Uh, getting to know you guys. I'm really sad that I wasn't able to get my uh, side computer up so I could watch the comments as they came up. Um, there's a lot of different ways for connecting. And um, I, I think yeah. a smile is really your best first, first option if it is something that you are comfortable with. Not everybody comes from a culture where smiles are as open. So. Exactly. There is no direct science to this. It can be in many different mediums, fashions, or forms here. here. But one way of doing this is not secluding yourself. Because if you're alone, there's no opportunities for connecting. So today, you all did a fantastic thing. Today, you got an opportunity to connect. You heard something new. You heard something different here. You know, Ruth, if you want to put, um, I'll, you can reach out to Ruth. You can reach out to me. You can reach out to anybody here and start having these conversations and building your, your you ink here, because it's, you have to start from somewhere here, right? And, and it can be as simple as just having a conversation to, you know, to just showing up and, and looking around and, and observing people here. Th does that make sense for everybody? Mm -hmm. All right, and so here, I used to stay late at the university and come early in the morning, so I love to communicate with the workers at the canteen, especially at those who made me coffee. Miriam, that's fantastic. That's, that, that is just absolutely great, right? And I can, I can even share another story with you here is that sometimes the people that you don't talk to at all that are only the helpers or the assistant, assistants that you say, oh, they are just here to support me and assist me and help me here, right? Those are the ones you need to connect with because those are as human as you can get, okay? So I really love what you did. You know, the person that's making you coffee, that's great. I'll tell you a funny story. I'll tell you a funny story. I used to wake up when I, before I was married, I would wake up in the morning. I wouldn't make coffee in my house. I would go to the store next to my apartment to get a coffee. Okay. And, and then I'll get a coffee, a paper, I'll drop my dry cleaning and I'll leave. And sometimes I'll get a muffin or a donut. Okay. But I would do it every day or three, four times a week. And the owner of the place she noticed me that every day I would come do this. So I, every time I would walk into the store, she would have my coffee ready and she'll have my paper ready without me asking. It's there, it's waiting for me. So she'd see me coming, she'll put it together. And then once in a blue moon, once in a while, she'll, she'll put a muffin in it or she'll put a, a cookie in, in it for me to take. So every morning I would wake up excited. I may be getting a muffin today. I might not be able to get a muffin today. It was no more in my control. It was in the control of the store owner, right? And she kept it exciting because I would never know, okay? And it was very nice, but then I got fat. So she tell, one day told me no more muffins, no more cookies, enough. <laughs> so, so she put me on a diet. <laughs> so, so I felt... <laughs> So you, uh, you see, and I laugh, and this is a story I share because now I still see her, her daughter goes to, New she is at New York, right? So, and, but that's humanity, guys, okay? Now, I, I want to stop here. I want to thank you all for joining here. I want to thank Ruth for a wonderful session, Ruth here. And let's give Ruth a big round of applause, everybody. Thank right, you yeah. both for so, being there. And um, we, will, we will continue the series again. So please, I look forward to being in touch with you all here again. Thank you all for joining. Have a wonderful, wonderful um, rest of weekend. Ruth, again, I really appreciate it. And now I feel going go eating a muffin somewhere. So <laughs> or a cookie. <laughs> I'll talk to you all later. Take care, everybody. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.